In this video, we're going to show you how to use the pocket toolpath. Now this toolpath allows you to take vectors that you've got selected and machine inside of those to clear the material out to your specified cut depth. So let's just go to file, close. So let's go and open up the pocket toolpath example file. So here we've got a series of vectors. We're going to demonstrate these vectors using the pocket toolpath. So to access the pocket toolpath, we need to switch over to our toolpath commands. And we're going to take a look at this in the 3D view. So we'll just switch on our vectors here. So the pocket toolpath can be found in our toolpath operations. And if you click on that, that will open up the pocket toolpath form. So we're going to start by selecting a vector to demonstrate this with. And the first thing we need to do is specify our cut depth. So we've got a start depth here that's currently set to zero. And we're going to start this at the top of our material. So we're actually going to leave this at zero. And you'd change this if you'd already cut into the material prior to running this toolpath. And then you'd set your start depth to the value that you've already cut into. Next up, you need to specify the cut depth. And so this is how far into the material you want to machine. So for this example, we're going to leave that at a quarter of an inch. Then we need to specify what tool we want to use. So if the tool, if you don't have any tools selected here, use the select option to open up the tool database where you can choose a tool. I actually have the tool that I want to use here already in my list here. So I'm just going to use the edit option just to check over the settings for this particular tool for this particular tool path. So here I can see I've got a quarter inch diameter tool where we've got a pass depth set to a quarter of an inch here. And this is the amount of Z that the tool can travel through the material safely in order for it to cut it. So we're just going to leave that set to a quarter of an inch in this case, which is the full depth that we want to cut here. Then we have the step over. So the step over is the horizontal distance between each pass that the tool is going to take. And we're going to have a look at the effects of that in a moment. Now, as always, when you are setting up tools in your toolpath, you must ensure that everything is safe and appropriate for the machine material and the tool setup. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And then what we can do is we can move on down now and take a look at the offset or the raster strategy. So the offset strategy is going to do this in a pattern that's offsetting where it comes out from the center and it goes round and round and round following the contours of the shape just as it's demonstrated here in this graphic here. Or we've got the raster option which will go back and forth depending on the angle that you are using and we'll come back to this one in a second. So we're going to do the offset strategy here and then we can come down to the bottom. We can give this a name and then we could go ahead and press calculate. And so if we take a look at these lines, you can see that the distance between each one of these paths is defined by the step over. And that's what we've got set up for the tool. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. Now, if we just twiddle our view and we'll take a look up the Y axis here, you can see that it's actually being cut on one single level. And that's because the pass depth matched the cut depth of the actual pocket itself. And so it's cleared all of this in one single pass. So let's just put that back to the top view here. So now we can look at previewing this. So I want to have a fill color for my cutout. So I'm going to select gray. So it's already selected there, but if you wanted to change it, you can use this option here. I'm just going to slow the speed down so we can take a good look at this. So we'll just go ahead and preview that. So you can see it's starting center out and it's just applying that offset strategy like so. So if we'll just speed that up till we get to the end and there is our finished pocket. So you can see from the preview, we do have rounded corners and this is just due to the radius of the tools. And there's no way to change this other than using subsequent smaller bits, but it will always have a radius corner. So let's just jump back into the pocket toolpath by double clicking on that toolpath there in our tree. So now we're going to have a look at the effect of altering our pass depth. So let's just go back into the edit option here. And this time we're going to set our pass depth to an eighth of an inch. We'll go ahead and press OK. And we'll press Control and Calculate. And then what we'll do is we'll just take a look at this from the front view. 
And so by using control and calculate, it just enables us to quickly get into our toolpath preview without opening the preview form, where we can still have access to the pocket toolpath should we want to make further changes based on what we can see here. So you can see now we actually have two path steps here. So we've got an eighth of an inch, followed by another eighth of an inch. That's going to give you that total cut depth of a quarter of an inch there. So now we're going to look at the effect of editing our step over. So let's just put that back to the top here. I'm going to go back into the edit option over here. Just going to put the path step back to a quarter of an inch. And then we're going to take a look at the step over. So this is the distance horizontally between each one of these passes. So at the moment, we've got it at 0.1 or 40%. But if we wanted to, we could look at decreasing that, say 0 0.02, which is shown as 8% here. If you go ahead and press OK, and again, control and calculate, you can see that the lines that we've got here are much denser. And that's because we've decreased the step over. So it's much smaller. Alternatively, if we use the edit option, we could look at increasing this. Let's make this one 80%. And then we'll go ahead and press OK here. And then again, let's control and calculate that. And so we can see here, we've got a larger distance between each one of these passes. And you'll also see that the software has actually added on these tails. And it's done that so that it doesn't leave any upstanding pieces of material in each one of these corners. So that's pretty much the effect of the pass depth and the step over. Now it's worth noting that when you are editing tools in here, you are only affecting the tool for this particular toolpath and you're not actually interfering with the data that's stored for that tool within your tool database. It's always good to use the edit option there. Okay then, so now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the raster strategy this time. So when we click on the raster strategy, we can see that this enables us to go back and forth in this motion that we can see displayed in this graphic here. And so at set at zero degrees, that means that's parallel to the X axis. And if we altered that to 90 degrees, that means that then that would create a raster pattern parallel to the Y axis. So let's just go with a raster strategy at zero degrees. We're just going to select our vector there and then go ahead and press calculate. Okay, so you can see it's going back and forth like so. So let's just reset that preview and then we'll preview that toolpath. Okay, we're just going to undo that and let's just slow that down slightly so we can see. So you can see it's going back and forth and now we'll just speed that up. Okay, so there we have it. Okay, so we're seeing a lot of cusping on the edges of the actual square itself. And this is showing really the effect of us using a round tool going back and forth like so. And we can actually clean this up using some of the profile options. So let's just go back into that toolpath. And here we've got the option to apply a profile pass. So it's currently set to no profile pass, which is why we're seeing that cusping. But we can choose to specify whether we want that profile pass done first or whether we want that done last after it's done its raster. Now this is more to do with the type of material that you may be cutting. Some materials will benefit from having the profile cut first so that they don't chip when they're doing the raster pattern. And then others benefit from running the profile pass last. And so really it's down to your material type. Now in this case, we're just going to go with last and then we'll just go ahead and press calculate okay, and we'll just reset that preview and then we'll just slow that down a little so you can see it's going to do the standard raster and once it's done that, it's just going to go around and clean up with a profile like so. And we've got nice clean edges there. So let's go back into the toolpath. So now we're going to have a look at this option here to apply a ramp plunge move. And this is where we choose to add a ramp entry move or not. And so if we go ahead and check that, what that will do is it will allow us to apply a diagonal move into the cut so that it just stops you vertically plunging in with your tool. Now, some tools don't have a good cutting face when moving vertically downwards. And so by adding in this ramp or this diagonal move, it just lessens the wear and tear of the tool. Uh, and so here we could just put in a distance here of let's say uh, one inch so just put one inch in there and then what we'll do is we'll just press control and calculate to take a look at that and then we'll just take our view and just switch to the front there and you can see this is your ramp 
what's happening it's ramping in across when it gets to the one inch and then it's going to go back on itself ramping down another one inch until it reaches that full pass depth there of a quarter of an inch and so it's just then going to go ahead and continue with its raster and so this just really helps take the stress off the tool and helps prolong the quality of your tools right then so let's just put that back to the top here so we're just going to turn this off for now. We're going to take a look at the pocket allowance. So you can use this if you wanted to overcut or undercut your pocket and you could apply an allowance in here. Now a positive number will undercut the size of the pocket by whatever value you enter in here. And then a negative number will overcut again by the same value that you enter into this field. And the nice thing about this is you can alter pockets without having to alter your vectors. So as an example, let's put in a value here of 0 0.1, like so, and then we'll just press Control and Calculate. Okay, let's just go ahead and select that vector before we do that. So Control and Calculate. And then if we just go into our 2D view, we can see this a little bit better by toggling on our solid view. And you can see it's actually over cut in there. And then if we applied a positive value so 0 0.1 this time and press control and calculate you can see it undercuts that there so in this case we're actually just going to leave that at zero so it fills the entire vector as we want it to so let's just switch back to the 3d view so now we're going to look at the effects of using multiple vectors to create pockets where we have vectors inside of other vectors so we're just going to select all of these vectors here and then again we're just going to go ahead and press calculate and then we'll just preview those toolpaths so we'll just speed that up we can see what effect we have here so we're just going to switch on our vectors again so you can see for our square we're just machining inside that square but you can see here where we've got a star inside the circle it machines from the outer vector to the next vector and you'll also notice we've got another vector inside that star and so it will leave this untouched and then when it gets to the next vector it will cut away inside of that vector same for the text up here so from vector to vector it creates that pocket then from the next vector to the next vector it will leave it alone and then where it identifies a vector inside of another vector it will then fill that out like you can see here and so it's very important that you select the right number of vectors and make sure that you have additional vectors on the outside if you need to change the order that this is going to pocket them in. So now we're going to have a look at the effects of the vector selection order. We're actually going to work with a different file. So this is the file that we're going to use. You can see we've got a series of squares here. I'm just going to select all of them. We're going to go into the pocket toolpath and we're just going to press control and calculate over here and we can see the order that the software is actually going to cut this in now we don't actually have any control over the order that the software machines this in it just picks what it considers to be the most efficient order but if we wanted to choose that order we can actually do that and so if we just deselect over here and then what we could do is we could go over into use vector selection order in which case we could say I wanted to select this one followed by this one over here and then what I could do is I could go ahead and press control and calculate again and you can see that the software has respected the order in which I selected those vectors because we use this option here to use vector selection order now in our last example we're going to look at how we could add multiple tools to efficiently machine our parts so i'm just going to open up another file and so here we've got a license plate now what we want to do is we want to pocket everything in between these vectors here so i'm just going to select all of those and we're going to go into the pocket toolpath so I'm just going to start by just removing this tool okay so we're going to go with a cut depth of a quarter of an inch and then we're going to select a tool from our tool database. 
I'm going to take my half inch end mill and we're just going to go ahead and press control and calculate to take a look at that in the 2D view. We're going to switch our views to a solid view. So you can see here it's clearing the majority of our plate out with that large tool. However, that large tool can't quite get into all of these small areas. And so this is where we'd look at applying subsequent tool paths in order for you to use smaller tools so you can get in at the smaller areas within your job. So here we'll just go in and select another tool. So this time we'll go with a quarter inch end mill, press select and you'll see it's been added to the list. And when, go, when I go ahead and press control and calculate, you can see it's able to clear away a lot of that material. However, we still have areas where it's not quite clear in there. And so we could add in another tool. So we could use the select option here, go into the eighth inch end mill, select that and press control and calculate. And we can see now we've successfully managed to clear all of those areas thanks to the three tool strategy whereby the largest tool will remove as much as it can and then subsequent smaller tools will get into the areas of the tools that the previous tool could not get to and so it's worth noting that you can edit the actual tool or the passes for each one of these tools on an individual basis by using the edit option over here and I'll just apply it to the tool that you have selected you can also apply a ramp plunge move on a per tool basis as well. So just make sure you've got the right tool selected if you want to apply a ramp move along with the allowances as well. And then in terms of the strategy, when you're in the offset strategy, that will be applied to all of your tools. However, if you're in the raster strategy, the raster will only be applied to the largest tool where the subsequent tools will be set to an offset strategy. So in this case, let's just go ahead and we'll just go and calculate that and then we'll take a look at the toolpath preview. So you'll see it actually produces three different toolpaths. So you've got two clearance toolpaths followed by the final pocket toolpath using the smallest tool. And then if we go ahead and preview that, we can preview this particular toolpath. So this is the largest tool. We can see what that looks like. Then we've got the second tool. And then we've got the final tool. Now there are a number of different tool changes here. However, there is a lot of efficiency involved within this setup because you are using larger tools to clear out areas and then you're using subsequent tools to clear areas that that larger tool could not get to. And so that completes this tutorial on how to use the pocket toolpath.